Hey guys, welcome back to another video. This is Motivation for Young Christians. Welcome back, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about the important role of women in the church, part one. Today I have the wonderful, the beautiful, the talented, there's so much work to describe. I have this amazing panel today because today we'll be talking about the topic of the importance of the role of the women in the church. And today we have this panel to be able to give acknowledgement and give the recognition that have not been given, but also speak on why the role is important and give advice to the upcoming young women in the church. Today we have our panel. Oh, hello, my name is Andrea Trimingham. I attend East New York Church of God of Prophecy and I am one of the youth leaders. Hello, my name is Michelle Allen. I'm the associate pastor of Life Worship Center Church of God of Prophecy in Bronx, New York. Hi, my name is Renetta Hanover and I am a worship leader at the Church of God of Prophecy for Heisluff in Guyana. Hi, I'm Rose Lawrence Phillip. I attend the Malta Street Church of God of Prophecy and there I am the assistant treasurer. Hi, my name is Roxanne Hanover. I'm from the Church of God of Prophecy of Riseless. There I'm the pastor. A pleasant good afternoon to all and blessings. My name is Darlene Baptiste. I am a member of the New Testament Church of God in St. Croix, but I'm residing in Orlando, Florida. I'm also serving as the Caribbean liaison for the New Testament Church of God International Worship Center, the Caribbean office out of the headquarters in Cleveland, Tennessee. I also serve as the head of the logistical and technical team for all virtual operations for the entire Caribbean covering from Bermuda in the north to Guyana in the south. God bless each one of you and thank you so much for this invitation. Hi, I'm Alona Brown and I attend the East New York Church God of Prophecy, otherwise known as Malta Street, and I'm the associate pastor. Hi, good afternoon. Hi, watchers. <laughs> My name is Sister Dana. I attend the South Ozone Park Church of God of Prophecy. I'm also the Queens and Long Island District Youth Leader and also co-leader at South Ozone Park. I am Sister Jillian from Albany, New York. I am a co-praise and worship leader, um, youth minister and singles ministry, and I do singles ministry for our uh, capital region and Hudson district. And I am a co-regional camp director with Sister Dana for the Trailblazers. Hello, blessed good evening to all of you beautiful ladies. I just want to say a greetings to all of you and blessings on all of you. My name is Kay Lashley and I go to the East New York Church of God of Prophecy. And what can I say? I love the Lord with all my heart. Hi, my name is Cavell. Um, hi, everyone. I attend East New York Church of God of Prophecy, and I work in part of the AV team. My name is Ella McKay. I'm from the Bronx Church of God of Prophecy. I'm a minister in the church, and I work in the peer group with the seniors. And I'm pastor's wife and a Sunday school teacher. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Good afternoon. My name is Takia Hanover. And I am one of the co u directors here in Guyana. And I'm also serving as a youth director and dance ministry leader at my local church in Ansborough. I'm also a PK. For today's discussion, we have three questions to be able to um, discuss about the topic. The first question that we have for today would be, where did you get your start and how did you end up where you are today? Awesome. <laughs> I just thank you again for this opportunity, Ezran. Uh, when I was just reflecting on that question, where did I get my start? I had to give honor to the strong lady influences that's been in my life. Um, my mother, um, Sisab. Audrey Blackwood was the children's church director. And through there, she gave me opportunity to serve. And then from my mother, then along came Minister Vivine, which we all know and love, uh, who has also pushed me and really helped me to hone in on all the gifts that I have. And um, just having a church body that's also supportive that um, to give me that opportunity to start um, that I really give honor to my pastor, uh, Bishop Hendricks, and they have helped me to end up where I am today because they sent me to trainings. Um, they've made time to personally speak with me to encourage the giftings of God in my life. And um, yeah, this, that's how I end up where I am. The constant pushing, the constant encouragement, the constant 
room that they've made and paved for me and that I can just walk in and do what I need to do for the body or for worship or whatever ways that I'm serving. So I do have to give honor to those people who have served. They've made the place that I can come in now and serve as well. Thank you. We bless God. Where did I get my start? Well, actually, um, from a little girl, as I can remember, the neighbors used to, my mom didn't used to go to church, but my neighbors, for some reason, used to tell my mom to get me to dress on Sundays. And every Sunday, a neighbor would take turns to take me to church. And there, I fell in love with the Lord and his word. And growing up, I continue going to church, even if a neighbor didn't come to get me, I continue to go to church. And I will always tell my mom, but uh, all my family, I want to go to church every Sunday because I want to learn more about God because the stories were so wonderful that I heard of this great man and the miracles and the things, and I wanted to learn more. And then when I came here to the United States, I, my sister at that time here, she was living here and she wasn't going too regular to church, but I tell her I want to go to church every Sunday. And in going to church, I became even draw even closer to walking with the Lord. And as I continue in ministry, you know, I grew more into the word and what God expect me to do and be. And I thank God for the many ministers and the great women in the church that supported and encouraged. And then I ended, I first started out in the Nazarene, but then I, for 10 years, and then we moved to East New York. And once, um, all years night, I went to East New York Church, which is Malta Street. And there I saw actually Pastor Lorna dancing and all the other ladies downstairs having fun for all year's night. And I was like, I need to come to this church. They, they danced, they had food. And I said, they're so welcoming and I need to really go to this church. So I started attending the East New York Church and thank God for all the support. Thank God for all the ladies in that church. And thank God for the support of the pastor, um, Bishop Matt Dowell. He's our pastor now. And I thank God that he saw something in me and that he allowed me to serve as the youth director for five years. And I continue as a local minister in the church. So I thank God for that, for that opening and opportunity that he saw it fit to use me continually throughout my life. Well, mine's Kachi started um, in children's church. When I was a little girl, I actually used to be the person who walked around to take the attendance and I got to collect the offering. But honestly, I think it was more so because, you know, as a little girl in your cute little dress, you get to walk around and parade. So I kind of had like that. So for me, it started there. And then also like when we used to go to um, state convention, my dad would always give me the money, you know, so that this way when we got to the tolls and things like that, I was the one responsible to make sure that I had the exact change to pay the toll people. And then I would keep my receipts and things like that. So now how I actually got into working in the office, I'll never forget, I was about maybe 15, 16 years old. And we would always hang out by Deacon Richard's house um, after service. So one day we was just there talking and stuff. And he was like, next week, Sunday, I want you to come upstairs and I want you to help out in the office. Um, I mean, it was nothing major. I can't even remember what I started doing, but um, that's how I actually started working in the church office. And then it just kind of grew and developed from there some 20 odd plus 30 years later. So that's how my story began. Um, well, my beginning is actually, um, both of my parents are pastors. Um, some of you might know them, Bishop Earl Higgins and Minister Daphne Higgins. Um, and my dad is the type of person that you can go to church and not do anything. So you have to find something to do. Um, but I actually got my start 
um, in youth ministry where I actually served as the secretary treasurer along with um, at that time my husband was the youth leader we were both in our teens at the time um, so we continued from there I'm still working in youth ministry I branched off into dancing um, and now we're co-youth national youth directors and under our remit is the organization of our national youth camp um, so I'm still working in youth ministry. I don't know how, for how much long I would be there, but that's where I began many, many years ago. Hi. So my start was a little rocky. Um, being downstairs in children's church, um, everyone knows that it goes to the church. There was a lot of, um, conflict that came up sometimes. So my way of going upstairs into the AV room was kind of an escape, right? It was kind of a moment where, um, oh, I like this. I like computers. I like music. I like um, videos. Um, but I'm also looking for a place to go where I have a better relationship. So my thing was, okay, if I, I be nosy enough and I go into the room and they don't kick me out, I can stay and my plan worked and I've been there for years now so it's kind of like it was my escape of you know maybe this didn't work out so well but you can have you can find this home and it became home to me and now I can't leave so short and sweet <laughs> so um you know Malta Street East New York has always been a place known uh, for birthing leadership you know um, people like Sister Hall, Sister Eulalie Hall came out of Mother Street. The, the Camerons came out of Mother Street. And, it, and I was blessed to grow up in that time when people like them were at Mother Street. And so um, I saw a lot of strong leaders that we wanted to emulate. And it was a kind of time as well when almost every ministry had a, had a young person and they called them, you know, in training. So you were youth director in training. You know, you were... They didn't have men's ministry there, but you know, somebody was along in training. So um, I started off as a youth director in training and I had the kind of youth directors at the Martin Cardi where um, when it was time to do things, even at the district convention or even, or even at the uh, uh, state convention, she didn't say, well, you know, I'm going to do it because she's a leader. The leader in training was going to do it. And through that, you know, really, as Sister Daniel was saying, just people that were pushing and mentoring I had a district overseer again, Bishop Cameron, when I, when I was being called into the ministry um, and running for my life, trying to get out of it. I remember we had things like foundation courses and I would try to run into the teaching section of it and Bishop Cameron literally sent and called me and said, no, you are going in the ministerial track of this. You know, so those kind of things. And of course, eventually I had to say yes for myself. You know, but um, that's how I got started in that. People really, as the data said, just mentoring and making space when they could have done things themselves, actually saying, no, you're in training. We're going to put you out there to do this. And that really helped to develop and to help me to say yes um, to what the Lord was leading me. I, I was a runner. Um, <laughs> I come from a line of ministers and, you know, my mom um, as a minister, my dad is a minister. I look very much like my mom and I declared that that was one thing I was not going to do like her. So I ran for a while, but praise be to the Lord. <laughs> one day I said yes, I said yes. And so here I am, associate pastor and, and director of ministries and a whole bunch of other things <laughs> that I do. But praise the Lord, that's how, I, that's how it started. So as you know, as they say, it takes a village to raise a child. And I just really thank God for placing many women in my life and my mom's life to help me um, as she began to raise me um, as a child. I grew up under many male pastors and it wasn't until I got under Pastor Ruby M. Jones Cardi, who was a woman who kind of like brought me in. Um, I felt like she didn't judge me, um, but she prayed for me along with, a, with the mothers in the church. And in all honesty, um, I was like many youth who uh, was very rebellious and, you know, did things that I wasn't supposed to do. So when I got to college, um, I strayed and I strayed hard and I just 
thank God for being that prodigal daughter that came back. But when I came back to the church, I got uncomfortable in a sense where you get tired of being idle, tired of being still, tired of watching people that are your age growing and developing in God and you're just still stagnant. So um, for me, um, I began to hunger and thirst for God. Um, and it happened around the time we were going to convention in Massachusetts. Um, and then we actually started to tra transition in the Albany church with our new pastor. But I like Sister Lorna was a runner. Like I felt like Jonah didn't want to really do um, much, but I knew that there was a calling on my life since I was a child because I was not like any other member in my family. I am a live firecracker. I am just very animated. And I know that God um, chooses to use animated people such as myself. So it was the pastors and the leaders um, within this region that pretty much saw something in me and placed me over things. Honestly, in my life at that time, I don't feel that I was where I should have been. Um, but I know that if it wasn't for them pushing me, I don't think I would have came out of the things that I, I was, I was stuck in. So um, I later on volunteered my services um, after God kind of pushing me. And then ultimately, um, God pretty much gave me a second chance to get it right. And now um, my start is now helping other people um, who are pretty much like me, who have had a rebellious past of doing things they shouldn't do. Just being that sounding board for them to know that um, God restores, God heals, and um, that God is willing to transform. So that's where my start came from, through a transformation journey with God. Good afternoon, everyone. So I grew up in the church. I grew up in Fulton Street, Church of God of Prophecy. Super quiet, still somewhat quiet, but a little bit more self-assured now as an adult. So I kind of stayed in the back. I did a lot of things in the background, very much a helper when I was attending Fulton Street. And it's like, you know, you hear everyone's story, you can pull a piece of your story from everyone else's story. So um, I turned 18 and I was like, peace. You can't tell me what to do anymore. My parents, my father's a deacon, my mom's a women's ministry leader of Fulton Street at that time. So 18 happened and I was like, bye. And I found other things to do. And I stopped going to church for a very long time. And then I had a very traumatic um, event. I had a child that was very sick in the NICU. She was born premature and um, she was very sick. And I remember my husband and I were at the, um, at the hospital and this one nurse, you know, you, in the NICU, you get to know the nurses very well because that's, they just there. And um, her name was Miss Joseph. And she came to me and she was just talking because the nurse was talking. She was asking me about church. And I was like, oh, I used to go a long time ago. Let's go. My parents need to go, blah, blah, blah. She was like, um, so why don't you know it's a conversation? Why don't you go? And I was also telling her how much I was working because I'm a workaholic. I work a lot. So at that time, I think I was working about six or seven days a week in a couple of different jobs. And this is, she was asking me about church and she said, um, I said, I don't have the time. She was like, so you have time to work so many jobs, but you don't have the time to give two hours to God. And I, I brushed it off, but it didn't, it didn't go away. It kept replaying in my head. It kept replaying in my head. You don't have time. You have time for everything else. But you don't have time for this. And the conviction on me was so strong. And I tell people that when I came to Christ, it wasn't anything. I was in church on a Sunday being, I came, I came to Christ at my bedside one day, just like, oh, okay, I'm so sorry. Like, it was really like a sense of repentance and conviction that I put a lot of things in this in his place. And so <clears throat> that happened. And then, so my parents were, had left New York some years back. And um, before they left New York, they were attending Fulton Street and Brother McDowell was the pastor there. I met him um, very briefly, maybe I went on Christmas. I was the Easter Bunny and Santa Claus. So I went on Christmas and Easter. So I probably met him there. And um, so called my parents, they were super happy that I gave my life to Christ. And then they put me in touch with Brother McDowell and also to help me pray for my daughter because he came to the NICU and prayed for her. And so I started going to church and again, resorted back to the quiet. Like, you know, I don't think, 
I don't know if anyone even know who I was for the amount of time that I was going to East New York. I just kind of came to the back. I stayed, got what I needed from the service and then I left. And then one day the pastor preached the message about doing something. I, I don't remember exactly what it was, but like being useful in, in the body. And I, and again, that stuck with me. I get these grenades, right? That I hear it and then it stays there. And then one day it's like tick, 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 boom, right? And I was like, I don't, I've been going to church. I ain't, I'm not doing nothing. I'm just kind of like coming and, and going. And so he spoke to me. We were talking and I, I came to him. I was like, listen, I heard what you said. And I've been thinking about it and I'm not really doing anything. So if you kind of want me to do something, you know, okay. And then Sister Lorna calls me and asks me to come to a meeting for the youth. I was like, okay. At that time, I was like 30 plus. I was like, what youth are we talking about? Um, but then it was a meeting between Sister Kay, Sister Lorna, myself and other people. I remember that day. And um, that's when I started and I started to become more involved in the youth ministry. And it was a very nice fit to me. I love, I love the youth. Um, I'm a young hearted person. Um, it, contrary to what people may think, I'm very like lighthearted and very funny and very jokey. And they allow me to be that. They allow me. My profession is one that you kind of have to be like this. But when you get to the youth ministries, you can be whoever you want. And I can be the person that I really am, which is a person who laughs a lot, someone who jokes a lot. Um, and I really feel like they are a blessing to me. They're a blessing to me. All right. Hi again, everyone. Where did I get my start? Um, I think it all started when I got saved. I was this reckless teenager looking for God knows what. And thank God I decided to surrender my life to Christ. I got saved. But when I got saved, I got saved. I had this hunger, this, this passion to go after God, to go after God. And so I think the drive that I had and the then youth leader, Bishop Higgins, who is now my national overseer, he probably saw something in me. I, I don't know what he saw because I was a withdrawn person originally who didn't speak a lot and so on. Um, but he probably he saw something there. And I remember the first thing he asked me to do was a five minute exhortation. He gave me a scripture and he says, I want you to talk about this for five minutes. And I think that's where it all started. Um, shortly after that, I became the youth director and I continued to work with young people, um, moving all the way. But I had this drive to see people get saved. I think that that is what drived me. I, I, I know I was messed up and God saved me and God did something miraculous in my life. And so I had this drive, this passion to see other people's lives change. And so whatever I was asked to do, I did it with a passion. I did it willingly. So at one time I was function almost in, functioning almost in every auxiliary. I was secretary for WM, teacher for Sunday school, youth director, um, band care group leader. Oh my God, I, I was just there. But there were a group of people at the church then, some women and men. And I think those people are the ones who help to mentor and pour into my life. And not only did they mentor and pour into my life, but they exercise a degree of trust so that they entrusted me with responsibility. And they keep adding and they keep adding as they see God move in my life, as they see God bloom and do things. And I moved from the local field to the national level. I was the national youth director. And I moved up to that. Um, Bishop Higgins is a man who is a church planter. And he has this passion for missions. And so every time he was off to a mission or to have a crusade anywhere, he will pull me along with him. And I will go. And then he will say, OK, you're going to run this mission for a while until we establish it into a church. And so that was my journey. I keep moving until I knew God had called me into pastoring, but it was something I was running from. I had this idea that pastors were poor and they had any money. And so I didn't want that life. So I say, God, I'm going to serve you and so on. I'm going to preach the word. But I want to be an evangelist so I can go to different places and preach and people get saved. Yeah. But God had a different plan. I think God had to literally 
say, okay, if you think pastors are poor, I'm going to show you what poverty is. And so God brought me down pretty low. <laughs> and at that point, I realized that, you know what? It's not the position that you are. It's the calling on your life. Because even in that state, God was still using me to minister and bring people to Christ and see people saved. I eventually said yes to pastoring. That's probably about 20 years ago. I am now pastoring two churches. And so God has helped me to establish, I think, yes, two churches with the one I'm pastoring as well. So that's my journey. I think it's my passion and drive that God has given to me when I got saved, that he saved me, and I want to see others got saved. And so that's how I start, and that's the journey that I took up to this point. Hi, everyone. Um, I would say my journey is I was a pastor's child, so... Naturally, coming up, you would be going through the motion of going to church every Sunday, going to church on Saturday, sometimes during the week, and just going to church, going to church, going to church. And I decided some point in my mind that, you know what, I can go and I can dance and I can do whatever, but I ain't really, you know. So um, I think what really turned my life, like really turned it was, and this might be strange, but it was making a very big mistake. Something where I know it was really going against God and what he wanted for me. And right in the moment, it's like, it just clicked. Like I heard God say like, is either you fix it now or downhill from here. And I just got up and say, you know what? I'm going to start taking this thing seriously. And I started to try to build a relationship with God and actually seek after him. And that's when I was around maybe 17. So I've been going to church all my life. And when I really got serious, I was about 17 years old. And now I am a worship leader who really just wants God to use me. And I try to submit myself to God and be willing to serve others and my community and so on. That's it. Praise God. It's truly an honor and a privilege to be in this room with all of these amazing women of God. And with you, Brother Ezran, thank you for this invitation. Um, as everybody has been talking, I've been listening, I'll be like, Michelle, how can you keep this as concise um, <laughs> as possible? But where did I get my start? I would say it's my conversion. Um, was not brought up or raised in the church, but I thank God for a praying grandmother um, who saw her granddaughter dropping out of college, six months pregnant, um, suicidal, um, and was just at a low place. And she said, you're coming with me to church. Um, and I came and I sat all the way in the back. And I will never forget, I share it as many times as I can. I heard the voice of God at that time. I did not know that that was a voice of God, um, but I heard a voice telling me to come. And I'm looking around, I'm like, nobody else is on my row. Um, <laughs> so I don't want nobody to see me and somebody's telling me to come and as I continue to hear that one word resonate time and time again tears began to flow and I felt a presence that I've never experienced in my life next thing I found myself to the front and saying yes I want Jesus um, so that's where my start was because I had an actual encounter with God and after having my son, um, I thought that this was it, you know, just go to church and this is it. Um, but I had a youth leader that would not allow me to sit um, because even though I was saved, because of what I've been through, I looked down on myself and thought I was not good enough um, to do anything in church, just to come and to receive. Um, but I'm grateful for my youth leader who said, come on, I, you told us you love to dance. Let's, let's dance for God. Um, and I began to dance for God. And after that, she began to push me and say, okay, um, I think it's time for you to lead worship. And I'm looking at her like, don't you know, I am quiet. I don't want nobody to see me, hear me. I'll dance, but I'm not opening my mouth. Um, and she was like, come on, Michelle, you can do it. And I began to lead worship and preparing myself for worship in youth ministry and just taking time to pray and to be in the word. Um, I just got closer to God. And when the opportunities came for me to do exhortations or to encourage the young people, 
um, I began to see a totally different side of me that I thought could never exist because as I, said, I always tell people, I'm an introvert. I still say it to that day. I'm an introvert, okay? I'm not gonna, I don't wanna go up with no microphone before people and say anything, but God has a great sense of humor. Um, so that is my start. It's God and people willing to take a risk on me. So I thank God for my youth leader and I give God thanks for my bishop um, who pushed me even further to call me to be a li- become a licensed minister and now his associate pastor, which when uh, minister, uh, Minister Associate Pastor Lorna was talking, running, that's me. I heard God saying, I call you to pastor my people. I said, I don't want to pastor. No, 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 thank you. That is not for me. Tell me to do anything else. I'll go all the way around the world, like someone else said earlier, and preach the gospel. But to be a pastor, Jesus. Um, But (laughs) I thank God that he is in charge of my life. And regardless of what I thought, um he knows best and wherever he wants me to go i will go so that's my start praise god up until now well my sisters i see a little bit of all our stories intertwining when i was posed the the first question i asked sister rose well my humble beginnings began in our anchor church in st thomas and gamma god a church of god of prophecy I was born literally, I don't know, I need to ask my mom if I was born on the first step or the second step of the three steps that lead up and out of the church. That's all <laughs> I did. So we had church on Sunday. We had off Monday, but Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then practice on Saturday to come back on Sunday. So that was it. That was the beginning. That was the beginning. And I, it, it came most vividly when I looked at how they drilled the word into us. Um, Even though it was in a competitive nature, um, it it took root. And I think I heard that story. Once it gets into our air canal and it takes root, it stays. Even though we may stray away, we still come back to what God's plan as in Jeremiah 29, 11, it comes back to his plan for, for our lives. We run far. I ran literally, um, you know, my, my secular job allowed me to travel extensively around the world and I took advantage of it, but I still came back to the step. Came back straight to, to trace it straight to the step. And my, my propensity for, for, uh, for service, I think comes from my mom. Um, our home in the islands, everybody for every convention, every function, they had to stay at the Curdy's house everyone, inclusive of your administrator bishop, who was our Caribbean evangelism director. At that time, uh, Bishop Leroy Greenaway, anytime he came to the island, he stayed at our home. Anytime any traveling bishop came, they stayed at their home. And I see my mom giving selfishly to serve these men and women of God. And I think that's where it came, it came from. And with a married of my secular job, in in the government sector, um, you know, service excellence. And I I saw us, the standard of our our church ministries, I started to see it slip. The secular and and environment was escalating while the church itself was either stagnant or declining. And I was like, Lord, we can't, that can't happen. So one of of the administrative bishops asked me, what do you see that we should do differently? That big, mistake for him to ask me that question. I listed, I came with my papers in hand and I said, well, we could start with this. First of all, you have typos on the screen. So we need to fix that because if you're trying to draw persons into the ministry, God service excellence was perpetuated throughout his entire ministry. He did all things well, and that's our responsibility. And it kind of evolved from there. Um, I started doing a lot of um, leadership seminars. I did a lot of health sector seminars. um, And it it just kind of grew and grew until the bishop, Bishop Ishmael Charles, uh, because I married into the New Testament church. So I have my one foot in prophecy and I have the other one in New Testament church. So I'm good, both both worlds. Uh, And and, and it kind of, I saw the need for us to, to have 
that level of ministry unlike any other. We serve an awesome God and we should rep represent him in everything that we do. Um, I kind of make joke about the um, some movies that we see. Um, you know, when we when, when Harry met Sally and then when, she, when they said, I want, I want what she's having, when they look at us, we need to be the light in the darkness. When we show up, things happen. Uh, and, I, and, I, and I'm really a, a big proponent of that. So where am I today? As I said before, um, multiple roles. I still do a lot of leadership development training throughout the entire Caribbean. I serve as the Caribbean Secretariat to the Caribbean Council of, of eight. So that's the high um, administrative bishops who do all the, the leadership work throughout the Caribbean. Um, I also manage the virtual world for, for the Caribbean where we have upwards of 600 to 700 persons on our prayer line every day. And today we, we achieved in the name of the Lord 343 consecutive days of prayer. So we're up from 3.30 in the morning petitioning God's throne, inviting him into, in, in, into the presence and for him to take over every facet of the Caribbean. And we are, have about 43 countries across the world that join us on a daily basis. So God is just moving awesome in an awesome way. And I'm just so delighted that he allowed me to be part of his plan uh, for the advancement of the kingdom. So positioning is really important, but service excellence is key. And I just thank my mom, my grandma. She was a youth leader. Um, um, she, one of the founding ones for the Church of God of Prophecy in the Caribbean, in the island of Angola. And just to see those women come to, come to that level. And, you know, and I'm, I'm excited, as you can tell, because um, I heard my Aunt Ruby, Aunt Ruby, um, I heard her name mentioned, and I heard Sister Marlene. She have her roots back at the same church, Gamagata. And of course, when I came to New York, our very, very first national convention, we stayed with Sister Yulee Hall. So again, when you surround yourself and the pouring of those women around you, you have but one way to look up to the master. Well, where I began, I was born in the island of Antigua and um, my, my mother was Catholic, my father was Moravian. So we had traditional church, we go to the traditional church, but I have an aunt, my father had a sister and somehow she moved over the, out of the area to another area and a young lady invited her to attend the Church of God of Prophecy youth service. She got converted and then she came after me. So she said, Get Ella, I'm gonna bring some people to pray for you. I know you need prayer. <laughs> so they came and I invite all my friends to come see the people pray. Because in those days, the baptism of the Holy Ghost was known so we never saw people getting in the spirit, speaking in tongues. So we thought it was fun. They came, they prayed. And every time they'll come to our house, I'll bring my friends. And after they pray and leave, I'll take over and start performing and praying and pretend I'm keeping church. Never know it would have got a hold of me. So I was invited to another prayer at somebody's house. It was a cottage meeting, we call it. And the lady was having problems with her husband. And I said, you know, I'll go. I went for curiosity, to tell you the truth. I went for curiosity to see what they were going to do. And the lady stole her story. And while she was telling the story, she said, the priest came. And he said, he doesn't want to see this Bible, referring to the King James Bible. I didn't know then, but it was the spirit of the Lord that said to me, so if they have different Bible, they worship different gods. I don't want to worship different gods. So right there. In my heart, I accept the Lord. But my prayer was, we sang a song in Sunday school. My cup is full and running over. I said, Lord, if you fill my cup and let it run over into somebody's cup, I'll serve you. And I got converted. And as I said, I was a mocker. I was a skeptic. We went to church. And they were singing and they were testifying. And I get up to testify. And everybody was watching to see if I'm going to mock again. And then I share my testimony that in that meeting, I accepted the Lord and my desire is to be a missionary and I sit down. And so the opportunity came, I was sitting, we have two tambourine trees in the yard where I live in Antigua. And I used to sit on the tree and read the Bible. And when I opened the Bible to Acts 7, 
the scripture came which said, get out from your country. That's the part I remember and from your people. And it's back in Genesis 12 with the Lord called Abraham. And I spoke back because it's what there's a verbal voice. And I said, get out from your country. I'm a daddy's girl, get out and go where? But I realized there was nobody there, it was the word of God. So I was in the Moravian church and I was walking for confirmation. So now I have a decision because Church of God of Prophecy was talking about baptism and I was going to be confirmed to be part of the Moravian church. So I decide I'm not going to go back to the Moravian church. This is at the age of 12 now making these decisions. I'm going to get baptized. So I stopped going to the class. The minister came to my dad and said, you know, she hadn't been coming. And my father was surprised because he didn't know. He worked all the time, so he didn't know. So my father said, what happened? I said, daddy, I'm going to get baptized. So my father said, if she want to get baptized, I think it's the best thing. Let her get baptized. So I got baptized. And that year they were planning a trip to Barbuda. Antigua is two islands, Antigua and Barbuda. And so I had decided to go on the trip in my mind without an accent permission. And my mother, I mentioned it to my mother in passing that the church is having a trip. And I think some of the young people is going. She said, well, you not going. <laughs> so what I did was I packed my clothes, my bag, told my friends, Six o'clock when the boat sailed, picked me up. And I sneak out and I went away to Barbuda on a missionary trip. And so while I was there, I had all my friends praying. I'm singing, I'm worshiping, but I have to come back home. And I asked them to pray for me. You know, my father worked on the docks where the boat land. <laughs> I came back and my father was right there. And he received me and said, it's a good thing you did. You did, I didn't like the way you do it. And that's where I got started. And then I came to America and came to Church of God of Prophecy. And then I was involved. And so I met my husband. As though Sister Roxanne was saying, I didn't want to be a pastor. I didn't want to be a pastor's wife, just as she said. Because my father had money, my father had cows, he had boats. I mean, and I see ministry, pastoring as suffering. I used to clean the church, work close with the pastor when he preached hard messages, they don't pay their tithes. So I decide that is not for me. I'll be a missionary nurse, work on my own time. But you can't tell God what to do. So here I am, a pastor's wife. I'm not poor at all. I'm not suffering at all. I have food all over. I'm feeding the community. I have clothes I can give to Haiti and I have clothes to give away. So the devil is a liar. If you submit to God, you will be taken care of. Thank you. So bless all of you. And I just wanted to say this. Thank you so much for coming i know this is women history month that's why i purposely had the conversation in women history month to show the recognition the hard work the it's just so much word to just explain how just important you are to the church you're the backbone you're you're the mother the healer the the guidance counselor it's just so much i just really wanted to show the appreciation especially with the platform i have because we're having this platform, God is um, able to work through me and I'm able to talk about any type of topic and and just thank you so much. And not only just in Women History Month, but to always show recognition to women throughout all the years, all your life, they're important to the church. Um, in my opinion, more important than men because this world wouldn't work without them because the Bible said be fruitful and multiply. You can't multiply without women. So. No. Thank you to every single body. This is the end of the video. Thank you guys for coming back. Thank you guys for watching this conversation, powerful conversation. I pray that you were able to get so much information from this video. I'll be back next week with more videos. This is Motivation for Young Christian. I'll see you guys.